All right, now at Expressa, you know we're all about bringing you the best of international entertainment, but we also pride ourselves in celebrating Africa as well. And lucky for us, our next guest is both. Uh, please welcome international actor, writer, and producer, Ernest Napoleon, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. in the studio. Yes. A very good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us so early. We really do appreciate it. We want to learn more about you, your successes, and hopefully find inspiration in your story. Starting off first with your background. I understand you were born in Russia, uh, but you then grew up in Tanzania, right? Yes. How, how did that happen? Tell me about that, that story, the background of you. So my mother is Russian, actually, mm -hmm. and my father is from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Russia, then I spent like five years in Siberia, which is really, really, really cold Yeah. With my grandma. <laughs> and I was like, okay, enough of that. So this, uh, like, okay, we're going to send you someplace warm. And that <laughs> happened to be a really hot place called Tanzania, yeah, which yeah, is in yeah. the eastern Africa. What was that, that, that adjustment like? Because you were telling me you were five years old yeah. when you moved to Tanzania. Yeah. So you were fluent in Russian already at, at I was, the time, yeah. right? Yes. That was my first language. That's the only language I knew. Yeah. So I, when they told me you're going somewhere else, the first thing I did is that, because I used to play hockey even as a kid, so I packed all my hockey things. I was like, okay, oh, I'm ice hockey. Ice, ice hockey. hockey yes. Right. And they're like, uh, we don't do that in Africa. It's like, why not? It's, like, it's such a fun game. <laughs> and then when I arrived, I was like, okay, yeah, ice is gonna melt here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, right now we've got a, a, a team from Nigeria that took part in the bobsled uh, games in, in the in the Winter Olympics. So who knows? Oh. Ice hockey might be a thing for one of our countries soon. Um, and then your story, how did it then develop from there? Because there's Stockholm involved there. There's London. There's the United States. You're quite a well-traveled man. Yeah, so when I was in Tanzania, I worked for a TV station called East Africa TV for mm -hmm. a while, and then I was DJing, and then my mom was like, okay, you, you gotta find some sort of education, because <laughs> she didn't consider entertainment as a really strong factor. So I moved to America. Yeah. So I lived in LA for nine years, wow. where I learned how to write and produce and, and act, mostly, because mm -hmm. I, I, even as a little kid, I was an actor. Yeah. Because in Russia, even at the age of four, I used to be in little plays, little school plays. So when I went to America, I kind of rekindled that yes. love for acting and, uh -huh. and writing. Uh -huh. And then at some point I moved to Stockholm um, where I went to get my master's in computer science. I actually have a master's in computer science. Uh -huh. And in Stockholm, that's where I wrote my first movie. Because in LA, it's kind of hard sometimes to isolate yourself. Yes. Because there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I moved to Stockholm, that's when I was able to write my first movie called yeah. Going Bongo. Mm -hmm which was a story about an American doctor who mistakenly volunteers to work in Africa for one month. So I showed it in LA and Tanzania, and that was yeah. my first sort of uh, try out in the independent film world. Yeah. When you say it was so difficult in LA, um, obviously because of the oversaturation of talent and there's all kinds of writers, and whatever, what, what were some of the other challenges that you faced um, in trying to get yourself noticed? Uh, well, the big thing is that I was trying to always develop my own projects mm -hmm. and when you're writing, you really need some sort of isolation. And in LA, it's always like, oh, your agent called, or you this and that, let's go to this party. So it was more about like, it was hard for me to isolate myself and sort of like be create my own thing without being pulled into different kind of things yeah. together. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I think LA was pretty fine for yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. So what would your word of advice then be to um, other young aspiring African actors, writers, producers who want to be noticed on the international stage, especially at a time as this? Yeah, actually this is a very good time to be African star. It's a very good time to be an African actor because of the Black Panther and all that movement. Uh, because when I moved to LA, um, there was no Lupita Nyong'o. So yeah. when you have an African name, that's the first thing people say, oh, we're not looking for that kind of thing. Like when they just hear your name, wow. they sort of like... Would, th would they say that like straight to your face? Oh, yeah. oh no, yes. They I mean, the casting people would say that. They would even say we're not looking at someone who looked like you. When you're like, you know, more light skin, tall, yeah. uh, blue, blue eyes. I was like, well, you can buy contacts. <laughs> wow. So wow. Um, to answer, what was the question again? About your, your message then to aspiring Oh, my message. So, so I think it's twofold. I think first thing is uh, to be... You have to work on your craft, of mm -hmm. course. And I think the biggest thing is to pick up a good theater program, sort of to develop your talent. Because in the theater, you get to put on a play every day and you get mm -hmm. to act every day. Unlike in the movie, you have to wait six months, sometimes yeah, yeah, a year, yeah. to get a good movie role. Mm -hmm. But in the theater, you get to practice your craft every day and get to improve. Yeah. And the second thing is, I think they have to understand writing, because writing is big. Because in the film situation or TV series, what you're doing, you're serving the writer. Mm -hmm. So you have to know where you fit in the script. 
so that you know how to play it. Excellent. And in terms of inspiration, I just say, you know, don't give up and maintain the innocence. Because yeah. many people get in the entertainment uh, industry and they get bitter. Yeah. And then when they're acting, that comes out. Oh, wow. And people, like, don't, people, you know. It's a very subtle thing, but yeah. you got to maintain your innocence and remember what got you into acting in the first place. Okay. Now, I've got a thing for languages. Before we go, I, I need to ask you this. Since you are fluent in Russian, can I ask you to say, good morning, South Africa. This is your feel-good breakfast show. In Russian, please. Feel good. Wow. This is a communist country. I'm well, not, do, not do, anymore. Do, do Russians <laughs> not know what feel good is? You <laughs> say it into that camera. So, good morning, South Africa. This is your feel-good breakfast show in Russian. Доброе утро, South Africa. Это наша хорошая TV show в Африке. Okay, I'm gonna store that in memory. One day I'm gonna greet you like that, and don't be surprised. Доброе утро. Доброе утро. Доброе утро. Доброе утро. We started off. That's that's the basics. But thanks so much for being here with us. It's it's really I think inspiring for us and youngsters out there to be getting some insight into your life and some inspiration also. But also don't go anywhere because we'll be chatting more about Ernest's movies and awards later on on your. Very interesting take on hashtag woke. Nick, you better hope these streets don't come out for you. Anyway, right now, uh, Ernest uh, Napoleon is in studio with us this morning. We're very excited to have him on our couch to find out more about his work. He's a producer, a writer, an actor, and he's won big at the 2017 Zanzibar International Film Festival. And this is just the start. So great to have you back to be chatting to you, Ernest. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. But let's talk about your, your film, Going Bongo. I mean, it's the first international film made by a Tanzanian. Um, yeah. That's also the first first East African film on iTunes. Um, did you think this amount of success would come from it when you initially pinned it? No, actually, I, I was, I treated it more like a demo of my work. So mm. I was like, this is my first work, it's probably not gonna be any good. So let me just, you know, get through the first couple of films. And it was very surprising when it won the best East Africa film mm -hmm. and then it got to be accepted by iTunes because iTunes is like, they don't just accept anybody yeah and yeah. then we had really good sales in Germany which is like a country that doesn't even speak English so I was like oh this is kind of cool for the first project so yeah it was it did take me by surprise given it's really low budget yeah. and we shot in LA and shot in, in Tanzania so it was kind of kind of exciting yeah. yeah do you find it kind of challenging to play both the role of a director and actor producer writer because you, you juggle uh, quite a few roles in this in yes this yes but um, I don't really like to be a director uh, and an actor at the same time yeah. because it's hard to be in front and behind the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I can producing is different because producing is setting up the project before. So, yes. but it's also challenging because sometimes if something goes wrong on set, you have to, you know, wear another hat and say, okay, I'm not an actor anymore. I'm a producer. You know. Why is this generator bill hasn't been paid or something yeah. like that? <laughs> <laughs> so much yeah. cool. yeah. Very also, specific problem. <laughs> I also want to talk quickly about your, your latest project, yeah. uh, Q Many. Yeah, Q Many. Yes. Tell yeah. me about Q Many and uh, uh, you know what is it that you've kind of applied differently from Going Bongo, which yeah. is your first film, and now to your latest. So well, Q Many is actually a film in a local language of Swahili. Uh -huh. And the reason I did it is because uh, we have an industry called Bongo Movies in, in Tanzania, and it's producing a lot of movies. I think it's maybe second in, to Nollywood in terms of sheer volume. Yes. But most of these films have been in really like lower quality. Uh -huh. So, and the excuse has been, oh, well, the budgets are too low, blah, blah, blah. So I was gonna, I, I did an experiment by making a film for like $15,000 and making it a really slow budget, yeah. but a good film. Because mm -hmm. I was like, this is possible because the thing is, when, when things are low budget, the writing goes, like people don't really care about the writing. I was like, if you write it well, yes. mm. then that's the blueprint to a good film and mm -hmm. if you can shoot it smartly. So I did this low budget film in Tanzania but then it ended up, you know, being accepted for big festivals and Pan Africa Film Festival. Wow. It got won Best Writing and Best Directing at Zanzibar Film Festival. Now, still, mo most festivals in the world are still asking for it. Like now, it's going to be playing in Belgium and other countries. That's wow. incredible because yeah. it can show wow. it shows people you can do yeah. a lot despite the budget. Yeah. Um, what is next for you, if I can ask that? Oh, so next up, we're putting a couple of projects. Now we're moving sort of a bigger budget film. Okay. Um, now I'm putting a project about um, an ex-slave. It's an American-UK production. 
It's about an ex ex slave who won his freedom through Mandingo fighting, which was mm -hmm. when the slave owners used to make that slaves fight for yeah. money, and he won his freedom through that because his his slave masters bet a lot of money on him, and then he goes on to fight the world champion, world uh, boxing champion. Uh, wow. In the UK. And it's based on a true story, too. Oh, my goodness. Fantastic. Yeah, so, we'll have a chat to you a bit later. Yeah. A bit more about that, because that's a very fascinating storyline. Yeah. So we'll have Ernest and Napoleon on the couch again a bit later. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Oh, welcome back to your Wednesday morning as we close off your field and breakfast show. Hanging out with uh, Ernest Napoleon. Great to have had you here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. You were great in the culinary hotline, by the way. I was hungry. The, <laughs> <laughs> Do you still hungry stand by the fact that that rep was good? Was it? I was, was it hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we thought to end it off, we, we'd play a little fun game of Would You Rather. Have you ever played Would You Rather? We give you two options and you just choose the first one that comes up out of oh, mind. Okay? All right. Okay. okay. So here we go. <coughs> Quickly. <laughs> Would right. you rather live in Africa or in the United States? Oh, in Africa. <laughs> um, since you're a producer, actor, writer, if you could choose only mm -hmm. one, which one would you choose? Mm. Um, actor, maybe. Actor, okay. Mm. Would you rather travel the world or explore your own country? I'll travel the world. Ah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Be invisible or have the ability to fly? Fly. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is, is that you? No, no. <laughs> <yet>. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, that was you, man. <laughs> no, it's me, and then I turn into that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would be invisible, though. Really? Yeah. What? Why? Hey. Why? The Just things the, you would be able to see. you could what, witness in life. What, what, would, what you would you like to see that you can't see right now in your very visible state, Leah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you what? What would you like to see that you are not able to see right now in your very visible state? You know, Michael B. Jordan just hanging around, living life to the fullest. I just want to be there. We'll, we'll, we'll let that fly. Just you let that fly. Uh, anyway, listen, very quickly, uh, you are also interested in, in getting young talent um, yeah. and putting them out there. If there are young South African actors out there, maybe some screenwriters, scriptwriters that want to get in touch with you and say, hey, I want to do this, what do they yeah, do? I mean, they can tag me at Going Bongo. I mean, if it's, especially if it's an actor with uh, like a show reel, I think it's quite easy to, to get to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I was, I was at the Black Panther premiere yeah, two yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. Yes. And funny you mentioned about Michael B. Jordan. It's just like, there's a lot of new talent that they introduced. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm very inspired by that, bringing the new talent to. Yeah. And those guys were f terrific. They yeah. were even off the record better than the you know the seasoned actors who were sure. in that movie. Yeah, the sure. new talent in the Black Panther. I don't well, know if you've seen the movie before, but yeah, it was yeah. incredible how much those young new talents brought into that movie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we hope that you inspire many, many more. So at Going Bongo, uh, you can check him out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for Thank hanging you. out today. Thanks, Eddie. Much appreciated. Thank Guys, what's going on tomorrow? Uh, well, we're going to take a look at a red carpet fashion, especially ahead of the Oscars. So that's going to be pretty amazing. Thank you. Luke Zion is here. Yeah, Zumba. Yes, so you're <gasps> yes, probably I'll doing some Zumba tomorrow. Hello, Lucas. <laughs> What did, you, what did you call him? Nzanjane. Oh, Luke. Nzanjane. Nzanjane. Cannot wait. I'm, I'm having heavy rotations today. It's going to be amazing. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Cheers, guys. <laughs>